Liza afraid to never let being deaf get in the way of playing soccer. Ever since she was a child, she faced challenges, but her hard work and determination always paid off. I was born deaf. My parents found out I was deaf when I was around 10 months old. When we found out she was deaf, we just did everything we could to help her to live up to her potential. And um, being the girl she is, it wasn't really that hard. She's very goal-oriented. When she sets out for something, puts her mind to it, she goes for it. I started playing soccer when I was about age three. My whole family always played soccer. My father was a big influence on that. Um, he was uh, born in Italy, so soccer is big over there. So he brought it here with him, and he was a coach himself, too. She was about three years old, like she said. She started like she was three years old, and I'm and I was coaching the team at that time. And at three years old, you know, that's all you have to do, just tell them not to touch with their hands, basically, and see if they can kick the ball a couple times around. And that's an accomplishment. But after that, you know, when she was about five or six years old, you could tell that she had some potential, you know, the, the way she ran, the way she moved, the way she, you, you could, if you knew soccer, anybody that knew soccer, you could tell that she had the potential to, to beat something, to beat somebody. Go, go. Yeah. Go. I don't want to take any credit for that, but uh, uh, I think I was the influence because that was the only sport that I really knew, you know, that I, and that was the only thing that I would uh, kind of pushed towards her, like, you know, if I had to bring home a, a, a toy, it would be a soccer ball. Toys led to varsity letters, which eventually led to a long, successful soccer career at Montclair State. But what was it like for Liza and her teammates to communicate, to get that chemistry that's vital for every team? I've been on the team for four years, or was on the team for four years. Uh, I played with Liza for three of those years. She transferred into Montclair our sophomore year. We're good friends, talk a lot. We played, like we played soccer together for three years and then we also played intramural basketball together last year and probably again this year. So there is chemistry, it's different. It is different, is probably the best way to describe it. I think the biggest challenge had to be communication and, and getting along with my teammates because sometimes you have to be aggressive and go up to them because people get afraid of deaf people. They don't know how to communicate or approach me because I'm shy too. So being aggressive was hard. But I always found a way to connect with my teammates. One thing, I always try to make jokes. On the field, I always try to clap and praise them. It helps um, when you make someone laugh, and I make myself laugh. So, one thing I can really do from from the goal is just literally just wave to her, point to a player I want her to cover. In games, since she doesn't hear the whistle, she has to depend on us or just look around to see what's going on. If she's heading toward goal. She's not stopping. And then she looks up and realizes, oh, they called me off sides, I gotta stop. And there have been refs who have yelled at her and be like, you, like, what are you doing? And then they're like, oh, never mind. Like, we have to explain to them, she's deaf, she didn't hear the whistle. When Liza first got to the team, everyone was kind of distracted, staring at the interpreter, not really listening to the coach. But they kind of become another coach uh, on the sideline. Yeah, you kind of, you just forget they're there. You just think, oh, it's, it's Bev or Christy, whoever the interpreter is. So it's, um, it can be challenging, but I think particularly this season, she really stepped it up, covered her mark. It doesn't matter that she's deaf, she's still a great player. It's fine, it's just like any other player on the team. Liza took her career even further when she was selected to play for the U.S. Deaf Olympic team. She proved to be the major factor in the gold medal game versus Germany. 
Well, I knew it was in the second half. It was zero, zero. I was like, I started to get really, really nervous because one goal can change the whole game. It was almost the end of the first half. Uh, I kind of got scared. I said, we're going to lose this game because Germany was really pressing. If Germany, Germany scored, my dream would be lost. So I was thinking, something has to happen now. But when we came back, we came out in the second half. Uh, they came out with a different attitude. It seemed like they were a different team. So I, I finally scored. And it was like the best feeling ever. All the people stood up clapping, waving. It was amazing. And then when she scored the first goal, that was unbelievable feeling. And when she scored, then uh, I can't really explain that. It's just uh, that uh, something that... It's a feeling that you just, uh, it was, <laughs> it was an explosion inside, you know, it's my little daughter. Once I scored, Germany broke down, and everyone in our team became more motivated. So, it was just, the game was ours, we knew the game was ours. I had the energy to run to the fans, and get the American flag and run on the field with the flag, waving the flags like crazy. Eliza is a great, uh, a great child, a great daughter, and she's a good student. That's um, more important than soccer. Uh, and, but of course, you know, the fact that she accomplished that in, uh, in, uh, in the Olympics, that was the cherry on the pie, I guess. I'm very proud of everything that she does. And She's a great person and she's a great human being. I'm proud to be her mother. <laughs> the determination that she has, that when she, she wants something, she tries her best, she does her best to get it. The next Death Olympics will be in Greece. So I want to go to Greece. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it.